Hello everyone and welcome to Day Trader S&P 500. Today is Friday, uh, what is today? February 3rd, it's the day after Groundhog Day. Wanted to let you guys know that uh, we'll once again be uh, presenting at the Elliott Wave Hub on February 16th. Lots of free gifts, lots of speakers there. You can click that link there. I don't know if it's a clickable link, so if not, got it drawn out here. Uh, we'd love to see you guys there. And I think we have uh, something else we want to show you here with uh, all of the uh, presenters. The uh, whole spiel there, Elliott Wave Hub, hosted by Jody. And there's uh, all the speakers. I'll be speaking at 11. Would love to see you guys. Lots of free gifts there. So uh, please sign up. We'd love to see you guys, okay? Haven't done a video in a while because, honestly, we're having some uh, some problems with our computer. I got an IT guy uh, working on a new one now so uh, we'll do mostly picks i'll see if i can get through on the charts here but uh, we'll look at the uh, u.s 10 year here okay we have a different wave count where uh we had this high up here in uh, october as a three but this wave down here we we're counting it as a four but it overlapped with that three it would have made it an ending diagonal but since it did it three times we went ahead and called that a five so this is a correction of that entire five wave advance going all the way back to the 2020 lows you can see a one in a circle a two a three in a circle a four down and a five uh, this would be a nice place for this correction to end within the fourth wave of one lesser degree and honestly it's there now okay c equals a at 2.975 percent and the 382 is 2.810 percent so that correction, it could make a double or triple bottom right here. So we'll watch that closely on a smaller term chart. But that's what we're looking at with the U.S. 10-year. On the S&P cash, a lot to show here, okay? Uh, from the January 4th all-time high, we've got five ways down into this A. We have a B up on 8.16 and then a C down, okay? You can see how this is uh, uh, moving in Fibonacci ratios and dates in the bottom here with this tab you can see we've got uh, the bigger waves a b and c where c will uh will be a 34 weeks on april 10th we all also have another uh fibonacci uh, turn date around then we can see the b wave up in the individual ways i won't get into all of them but you can see the fibonacci as far as time goes it's it's virtually perfect this would be eight weeks if c ended on 213 but it We'll see what that does. It's got another uh, couple, uh, well, less than two weeks now. I think we have something with the uh, E-minis. Yeah, there we go. From that B-wave high, you can see we've got five waves down in red, and then three waves up for A, and then a B, and then a C. We've got a primary count in black, and I got a pick of this also, and an alternate count in blue. The only difference is this move up in wave two, or the larger wave B, primary counts there, alternate counts there, is that higher high once that uh, that um, 4327 is broken. If it is, that's still our pr primary count in black, and it remains until and less than until 4327 is broken to the upside. Okay, let's get to some of these uh, picks here. Uh, before we do that, I want to get you guys caught up here. Uh, Let's see here with the, um, I don't know if I have anything in here to show you guys, but definitely in the February uh, monthly report, cover a lot of different things there. I think, uh, yeah, we had that rinse repeat. There is that uh, bigger picture of the E-mini futures, the daily bar. You can see the uh, dates and prices in purple, and then the primary count in black and the alternate count in blue. And uh, we were having a bunch of... Uh, rinse and repeats in there okay it was no big deal for the uh for the market to break above that 4180 high but that 4327 high is a different story altogether let me see if we can get down in there and there's where that uh oh that fibonacci time spiral um right not the time spiral but the tool in uh, trading view i put it on that high it's a new tool for me you see it caught some uh pretty important turn points there it went all the way out to the 4.618 
which caught the wave uh, A low in October. So you can see there, caught that high there, caught that low there, close to catching that high there, close to catching that low there, and it started at the 1.4 all time high. I think I may have, and I think that may be it right there. Okay. Yeah, and we're going to move to a, a short position with any move above the 43.27 wave behind on 8.16 when and if it happens. We'll remain short on the intermediate and long term um, situations there. Okay. So let's get into that uh, monthly report now. And here we go. Okay, get you guys caught up with all these picks. There's our wave table. There's that weekly bar there. A whole lot going on here. As you can see, those individual waves are turning on Fibonacci times and the uh, the internal waves there and then the larger waves too. We'll see how that wave C plays out. Okay, and I wanted to get that out. I promised the, uh, the subscribers that I would get that out this weekend, but I wanted to get these upside and downside targets out before the jobs report at uh, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central this morning. And you can see there, there's that make or break at 43.25 if uh, if that breaks and we've got higher wave B targets. Okay, and then uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, once it passes a 7.86 retrace, typically, but not every time, it'll go ahead and retrace the whole thing. So we'll see if it does or not here. Here's that alternate count. If I can get that into view here, let me get that down just a little bit. That's one of the problems we're having with the computer, the stickiness of the mouse. Anyway, you can see there from that B wave high, there's the make or break. The primary count calls for a wave C here up. We got an A up, a B down, a C up to hold below the 4325, which would make this a wave two in black. If it goes above, then the alternate count has C equaling A at 4373, and then a 1.618 at 4750. That would be quite a shakeout of the shorts if they haven't done so already with this move up, okay? But that's what we're looking at there, and I think I explained there later. The only difference going forward in the primary count and the alternate count is the height of this wave C and or 2 of a larger degree. Will it move above 43.25 or not? It should lead to a wave 3 down, which should be strong and powerful as soon as this 2 is over. With that move above, the 4100 high on December 13th that tells us that wave C and the larger wave 2 up is still in play. And I think we had a lot of uh, three waves up. Three wave, Anyway, we'll get into that. There it is. The only difference in those counts is the 4325. It either makes a higher one in the alternate count or it stays below it in the primary count in black. Okay. Um, let me see what else we got. Oh yeah, the NASDAQ here. NASDAQ's leading on the way up and lagging on the way down but uh, that just reversed with the C wave so uh, we made note of that all these check marks are these um, Fibonacci time spirals here and you can see where they hit not every turn but a lot of the turns the next one is not until uh, July the 5th so we'll see how this plays out but so far so good there's the make or break on the uh, B wave high here as you can see the, as you, you saw in the S&P, it went above the 786. And see, the NASDAQ is still overall lagging from that October low. It's just crossed the 618 retrace uh, yesterday or Wednesday with the uh, Fed announcement. Okay, But uh, it still hasn't reached the 786. And the uh, S&P is over it and threatening that B wave high up there. Okay, That's the NASDAQ. Um, Okay, let's get into the Dow here. There is the Dow. There's the, hello. <laughs> there is the Dow, right? There. Sorry if it made you guys dizzy. That's got an expanded flat for a second wave. You see a first wave low here. A up. All right, B down goes below the start of A. And C up goes above the end of A. That, was, that is what makes an expanded flat. We have a one down and a two up. All right, that two should not go above that uh, 34.712 high on December 13th. And then we should see a third wave down. If it does, it just means that two is a little bit higher. We'll watch that play out over the coming days and weeks. Here is that uh, U.S. 10-year, the Treasuries there. I can get that in a little bit better. Again, that's that wave five high. There's the A down, the B up. There's where C equals A. And there's the 382. And that's the fourth wave of one 
larger degree of trend that would be a nice stopping place as I mentioned before it's already in that range of the fourth wave we'll see if this low holds or if it goes down to one of these two targets here okay I think that's what we got there we're going to move to a short position in the short term on the interest rates and resume a long position when and if this high here of 4.335 is surpassed to the upside okay Here's our gold market. Haven't looked at that in a while. All the way back to 2015, we have a one up, two down, a three up. And this four was really interesting, but uh, we hit around here in the 1600s. The A wave hit 1678, B wave up, made a lower high, and then C wave down, a couple hits right in there, 1614, 1658. We had a target of 1619, hit that 1614, a direct hit. And then we were looking for a move up the signal that four down is complete and five up to our target which is 2147 uh, from this low back here so um, as soon as that 2070 and then the 2075 is surpassed we're looking for 2147 on gold I think that might be all we have on that let me get to those uh, there's our next uh, Fibonacci turn date in April let me see what else we have here. I think I had some picks for you guys. Let's see what we got here. I wanted to show you guys those lower lows and there, I think it's right here. Yeah, here we go. This was put out a couple days ago to our monthly subscribers. As we kept saying, we're getting three waves down, then a higher high. Three waves down, a higher high. Three waves down, a higher high. As, as long as the three waves down continues, the trend is up. Okay, it's been up basically from 1222. But uh, we need to see five waves down, followed by three waves up to a lower high. We're looking for that and the one and 10 minute charts and reporting to our monthly subscribers. Haven't seen it yet. So unless until we do, the trend remains up. We'll see how long that lasts. If it goes above that 43.27.50 high or not, all that'll mean is it's a higher B wave and we had those targets before. Okay, let's see what else we have here in the picks for you guys. Let's see what we got there. There's the U.S. Treasury, which we just saw a repeat of that. Okay, not sure that we need to belabor that point anymore. I love this chart here because it's got all the. Uh, I'll make that a little bit bigger if I can. Let me see here. Might be too big now. Let me get it back down. Oops, my mistake. Let me get it back up here now. And there is the weekly and. We'll move that down a little bit so everything's in the picture. There we go. And again, those internal waves, you know, it's within one or two each time. You know, eight minus one for seven on wave one. Wave two was five. This is uh, weeks, by the way. Weeks wave. And then the bigger intermediate count down here. We'll see if that goes, uh, if C goes down into April. That's going to be really interesting. Because if this wave two high holds here at 43.25, that might happen. We might get that to be the two and then three down into April, which will give it, you know, a good couple of months. But we'll see how that plays out. It's out there a little ways. But all these waves in here, you know, eight, eight plus one, eight would give us 213 for this uh, wave C high. That's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Okay, that's that one. I really like that chart. It really shows how this thing is moving, not just in Elliott Waves but also in Fibonacci ratios and multiples in terms of time. Let's see what else we have here for you guys. We can get those other ones up. There is the weekly with the primary count in black, the alternate count in blue. And again, the only difference going forward is the, the height, if you will, or the price of wave C and the larger degree wave 2. Does it end here under 43.25 or does it go above? If it goes above, the alternate count kicks in. Okay, let's see what else we have here for all you guys. There's the gold. Okay, we went over that. A direct hit on four. We're looking at five, looking for a move above 2070, 2075, and then the target of 2147. And last but not least, there's that uh, time. I don't know what uh, trading view calls it, but I just started using it. How that hit all those all the way into the wave one low. Okay, but more importantly, again, there is the alternate count in blue, the primary count in black. Again, the make or break is 43.27. 
and that means if it breaks it then this wave C and higher degree of trend wave B is going higher let's get rid of that and let's uh, let's leave here with that S&P okay there's all that action there and this is live this thing is let me get the uh, symbol last price there we go the S&P cash is sitting at 41.75 right now and let's look at the ES and that's at 41.85 okay and this is a daily chart so that high so far is yesterday's high of 42.08 again 43.27 is the key level okay that's it for this time hopefully I can get you guys back in uh, sooner rather than later working on that new PC now Okay, until next time, take care everyone.